Hey, y'all. <clears throat> so let me go and get this video out the way. I'm also going to sit here and do this before I do the rest of my content. Um, hope everybody had a great weekend. I just did my little mini workout, so if you didn't see it, it's pre-recorded. It should be in the long-form video section. Go check it out, as well as the other ones. There are some that's live, my old lives. Check those out for Mondays and Wednesdays, as well as long-form videos. But I made a video today, a little short, and it said, let me go right to it. It's funny. You know, some things that may have been heartbreaking or serious or, oh, my God, I can't believe it, don't always have to stay that same negative feeling to you. Just because I'm telling this story, that don't mean I'm looking for people to say, oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's not like that. I just like to share things I've been through. It could help somebody else. You can laugh at certain things later on in life. And this is one of them things I laugh at. It says that one day when I read Tony's text messages to another woman, D picks two. That's what I typed on the short. So y'all go check it out. I got three likes on it so far. One comment by Marcy. Tony sounds a lot like my ex. <laughs> Exactly, Marcy Ann. Yes, a lot of them is out here like that, you know. <laughs> That's what's so funny. It's like people act like that. Oh, he wasn't the right one. He wasn't the right one. Ain't none of them really the right one until they decide to just to be the right one and how long it may be. Because they all is just, it's, I'm going to say, uh, when I say all, of course, I don't mean every single one. But I'm talking about the majority, the big bunch, okay? Uh, especially depending on how they was raised, uh, their mindset, sometimes the age, because sometimes age don't mean nothing. I went through this, Tony was 46, going on 47. It was storming out there. Anyway, so this is what happened. Now, me and Tony used to date back in the 90s, about 92, 93, for about maybe three to six months. It was short. It wasn't that deep. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't go on with it. I'm not going to get into all the details about that part. I just want to get y'all a, a visual of the relationship, which was meeting them in the club, kicking the bobos a couple of times, kind of like lost contact. Here come 2016. I thought about him. My husband had moved out. We separated in 2015 on November. Now here it is, February. That's what? December, January, February. That's three months going into the new year that I had not been with my uh, husband at that time. Wasn't talking about reconciliation or nothing. And then once I thought about Tony, and I'm like, why would I think about him? I thought all these years I haven't seen her to smell this ass in about 20 years or more. Then I was, I was drinking wine, so I was like, I'm going to look him up on Facebook. Because at that time, I was just doing Facebook. One no TikTok or nothing. Talking about 2016. One no Facebook or none of that. So uh, I forgot. I was drinking. Then the next day, I'm sitting in my chair sipping, and it came to my mind again. I'm like, damn, you're supposed to look him up on Facebook yesterday, but you forgot. I was like, I'm going to look him up. I said, go on, do it now. And I be talking to myself like that. Go on, do it now, because if you don't, you're going to forget. So I got right down on my phone, right then and there, and I put his name in the uh, search box on Facebook. I don't remember how I remember his whole name. That's crazy. I haven't thought of this person, because I always called him Tony. So for me to be like, Anthony Brock, that's what popped in my head, Anthony Brock, and a visual of his face. So anyway, I go look for him, and I find him. And I knew it was him because, you know, the profile pic really wasn't a dead giveaway. Because, you know, I saw people use different things for profile pics. I wasn't really sure if that was him because it kind of looked like it could have been him when he was young, and it was. So I went to digging through the photos, and I seen, I said, oh, yeah, that's that nigga. He been drinking his ass off. That's what I said, but I didn't want to be all negative about it, like this because people drink. You know, even if they have a drink every day, that don't mean that they are, are unfunctional alcoholic. They might be an alcoholic, but a lot of people still go to work, still got some sense about they self. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I uh, inboxed him. And I think later on that evening or the next day, he inboxed me back. I didn't know if he was going to remember me, if he's going to be telling me how he lived in a whole other state, country, he married or what. I was just checking on him because he popped in my head. And I'm trying to figure out why in the hell is he popping in my head? Because I ain't looking for nobody. I ain't trying to get in no relationship with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm good with my husband gone. I didn't like that we broke up, but I had already been prepared for it months before we talked about it. We became cool. So by the time he left, it was all good. Even though when somebody leave, that whole feeling just really set in a whole nother way. It hit different. 
as, a, as opposed to talking about it, knowing what it is, and you know what I'm saying, really being able to get along to that certain degree where y'all can still coexist in the same house, pay bills together, even though you know this person ain't happy and they leaving, but y'all cool like that. But when they leave, it's like you be sitting there waiting like, damn, you know, it's going to be terrible, so I'm going to cry, but I never did. So anyway, we get to talking and stuff, and then you know how you catch up? You ain't seen this person since y'all was in y'all mid to late 20s. And uh, now that I'm going on at that time, I was 49. He was 46, going on 47. Because I'm four years older than Tony. Uh, so I'm telling him about I just separated and different things. And we reminiscing on our past. And that day at the club, and he was talking about, why come we never get together back then? This, then the third. And I'm like, it's been a long time. Let me explain to him. Again, maybe you forgot. Nigga, I told you I was dating somebody back then. I was not going to stop dating that person, which was not my husband at that time. Totally different person. Totally different situation. I was not going to be leaving the person I was already dating heavy that I was really feeling to date you just because it felt good. Just because we laughed. That's because we danced good. You know what I'm saying? That's because it seemed like, oh, magic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know why I even fell for it this time. Back in my 20s, I was telling myself, no, nah, it feel good. He could dance his ass off. Y'all don't even argue like that, you know, because y'all just be in that party mode. But it feels like it could go somewhere. If I told myself then, nope, don't do it. You know, that don't mean shit. You know what I'm saying? You still don't know him. Why give up somebody that you already know? Even if it ain't the relationship that should be perfect for you or you still trying to figure it out, I wasn't going to leave that relationship to be with him. And I explained that to him. We dated a little bit more and then I just broke it off because it was like too much. I wasn't going to be doing all that relationship type stuff with him and him. Now on the spell here and there, I did, you know, I was like, nah, this ain't for me. I ain't that type. So he said, in the fact that he brought that up, later on, let me know that was a red flag. But I didn't see it then. I didn't see this being a red flag. I just thought he was just you know, reminiscing, just, you know, asking a question, not, not serious about it. But then he gets, a, a couple of times he has said it again. Now, as time go on, you know, he living two and a half hours away from me and we trying to, like, be friends, but at the same time, feeling like maybe this is a sign that we could move on. This is the right time for us. But back then, we was both on some other shit. You wasn't ready, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Now time is gone. We both old and mature. We've been through shit. I'm just going through shit. He tell me about what he was going through, what he'd been through. Somebody he was for the marriage, people he was dating. You know what I'm saying? Being in the army, just life itself. Normal shit that people do. Only difference is we're older in a different place. We know what we want because of everything that we've been through. Right? Shit. So the end of the day, I think he came and visit me every weekend for about four, five, six times. I came to visit him once. And then at that one point, we just said, look, we're going to do this. Let's just do this because you're too far away. I got a good job. And at that time, like, I ain't no husband down there. I ain't had nothing really keep me. I had two nephews, but they was never there. They pretty much moved out, but just come to my house and maybe change clothes or just say hi or whatever. They weren't really living there. So I didn't think None of I don't know if they call themselves mad at me about or what to this day. I don't know. You know, people never never really say how they feel, but they kind of like treat you a different way. But anyway, and that's not both nephews, that's just one pretty much. The other one, he never did really treat me different. So I decided, okay, cool. Well, let me finish this last dance workshop summer with my dance group because we already have been putting it out there like we always do. We always start months in advance. So if we're gonna have a summer dance program starting in june that means you got to start putting that out there and start working on it at least three to six months early and uh by me not having the same income that i had before all this took place before my husband left before i lost my section eight voucher and all that stuff by me not having the same income by him being gone it made it rough and by them not really enrolling fast enough because they was always last minute people but i couldn't afford to stay there and try to get a job and have my daughter help me and all that stuff it was just too much mostly financially and everything like that so i just decided look to y'all not enrolling not one person has enrolled here it is may i'm gonna get sleep it's may already nobody was enrolling it so i just picked up and left 
Now, when I say picked up and left, that don't mean that we ain't have no plan. I just picked up and left. He said, well, you can bring the kids on there. You ain't going to bring your, your uh, you ain't going to leave your five grandkids and your daughter down there. And he was right. So, because uh, she had to say no, and she had to be more stable down there herself. And uh, But she was going through some stuff, and it was time for a new, a brand new start. Brand new start, right? So she was game to go too. And so he got a place for us. It was a two bedroom townhouse right next door to his mama. Not literally next door, but like probably like probably like a block away, but it was the same complex. So uh when I, I had never seen nothing but a little couple of pictures of it, and I just trusted him to be able to, you know, get a good place. And it was decent, it had good potential, but it had red stains in the carpet, shit like that. Okay. Here it is, made it first. We didn't move down here. Uh, he didn't do the bulk of the financial shit. I took my little ass coins and, and helped what I can and get myself down there. And little different things like that. Because I didn't have the same income yet. But I had a little money saved up to do what I need to do. Now, here it is. May 1st, 2016. We moved down here. May 27th. That's 26 days later. Y'all hear me? 26 days later. I would get on his laptop. I didn't have one. All I had was a phone. I always get on his laptop. He knew that. It wasn't no big secret. So I go straight to Facebook. You know, open it up. I ain't paying no attention to nothing. I'm thinking it's my Facebook. So I go into uh to do something. And then I realize, oh shit, this is Tony's. Oh shit, let me go on and log out and log into my shit. So I'm typing like. Wait a minute. Hmm. Let me check his messages. That's just type of person I am because I want to like make sure. You know what I'm saying? He on up and up. Not that that would have proved not because he could I could have went in the messages and wouldn't been nothing ever regular ass messages. Nothing incriminating. You know what I'm saying? And and still he could have been doing something. That didn't mean nothing. But me, I'm a Virgo, and that's just me. And uh that was already signs, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion. You know, just because he a man, period. Can't just tell me no anything. You got to show me. So I look. The first thing I see is a message from him to some female. I can't remember her name all right now. But as I'm looking at it, I'm realizing the time is right now that these messages are going through. Even though he's not here, he's not on this laptop, but he's somewhere in his account, on his messenger, typing these messages to this young lady. As I read these messages, I'm realizing this young lady is actually somebody he works with. Where's Tony at the time? At work. Where's this young lady at the time? At work. What are the messages saying? He was asking about how her weekend was, how much he was thinking about her, and how would she feel if he told her he liked her, would she like to go out for a drink? Now, here it is, 26 days later. We had already moved fast. So when I first uh, looked him up, I'm expecting him to say married, dating, whatever. Just like he should have been expecting for me. You can't meet people, especially grown-ass people, and think they're just going to be single. I'm automatically thinking you with somebody. Even if you ain't obligated, you at least got somebody you can go to when you're in that time and need, you know, friends with benefits type of situation. You got somebody you can go to. So to sit there and pretend like he wanted to build something with me and this is from God and this is meant to be. and Man, I miss you. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. I remember back in the days, now is our time, blah, blah, blah. Why do all that when you know all the time that your monkey ass was still out here flirting and doing whatever people do, men do? You know what I'm saying? You a single man. You still, you a single man. You wasn't doing nothing wrong as a single man. But why try to portray to me that you all about me now? Because even if you was doing that, and then when you decided to tell me this and show me this by doing all the things you was doing for me financially, moving us down there and all that shit, sending me money before I even moved, seemed like you would have just put a stop to it. Like you would have told yourself, self, yeah, I'm having a good time out here doing my little thing, but it ain't really enough for me to not really move on with somebody that I found. For my past that I really was feeling, I think I'm still feeling it. I think she's feeling me 
and give it a little more time first. And then we let a couple more months go by. We just stayed a little bit longer and really analyzed this shit. But I was in this financial situation. I ain't going to lie. That's why I went on and let it go fast. And I pushed the red flags to the side because I've seen one or two red flags. And I knew I shouldn't have probably just waited a little longer. But when you pressed and I'm, you know, I'm already getting behind in my rent, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And I'm feeling like this got to be from God because why else would I think of him after all these years? So I'm reading these messages. She like the girl, like, you know, according to her messages, she's a gay woman. Because she was like, my woman, my wife, I wouldn't do that to her. You about to marry this woman here. You shouldn't do that to her. And he was just like pretty much ignoring. She was saying still trying to get with her. So I ain't say nothing. I don't think I said nothing until he got home. Then again, I don't know. I might have been mad and type and type some shit. You know how sometimes we can't keep our goddamn mouth closed that our right hand know what our left hand doing. I can't remember which one it was, but I think I want to say I went on to say something before he got in. So his whole reaction was, I didn't do nothing but flirt. I didn't do nothing but flirt. He ain't seeing the fact that he was flirting trying to get that was a problem, especially since we only been together 26 days. Okay, move on. Yeah, I'm not I'm not devastated to the point like, oh my God, I thought you loved me. I love you so much. Hell no, it wasn't that. It was more of I picked my goddamn family up to come down here to build something with you. I don't care about all that extra, extra shit. It's about survival. It's about having somebody that's going to be loyal to you, love on you, protect you. That's what it's about to me. All the other shit, that's good. That's extra it's icing on the cake, okay? But to find out you ain't even loyal, and I didn't drag my happy ass with my five grandkids and my daughter way down here. So uh, just getting up to go was not an option. I long, no longer had my place, and I couldn't just go move my mama. She only had one bedroom in the city, and I didn't want to take all my grandkids over there. I mean, for a night or two, I could have, but it wasn't going to be nothing long term to do that. So I pretty much just like, okay, uh, fuck it, you know, and we just went on about our life as if everything was cool and even though it wasn't cool and I let them know that shit you're talking is bullshit whatever but okay you know we're going through our everyday life everyday life now mind you that was May May 26 fast forward June July August September somewhere in between those times we had a little couple of little mm, this nigga kind of crazy little arguments whatever but nothing to the point where it's like go now go now call the police because I don't believe in calling the police it got to be like my life in danger, danger. And I've never been faced with nothing like that really before. But anyway, here come my birthday, September. He drunk as hell. Now, I mean, not knowing how he get drunk. I know he drank, but I ain't know he was a drunk because my eyes didn't want to see it. Even though it was written all over his face. He didn't have to say a word. Anyway, he would get to argue with me at my birthday party. Telling me I need to hurry up. Now I'm ending the place because we ain't rented out this hall and I'm trying to get the, together and say bye to people I ain't seen in umpteen years. This is the first party me and my girlfriend had, had together ever. We celebrate our 50th birthday. We really made it. We had a, his friend DJ, my friend did the comedy. We had food. It was really, really nice. So we kind of end it right and get up out of on time before they try to find us and keep our deposit. And he, you need to hurry up. First of all, who the fuck you think you're talking to? I'm tipsy too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm talking shit back. And this young man that was a friend of my friend who birthday party was too. Her friend, I don't know this man, he seen him arguing with me and they got into it. They was almost going to blow us. Thank God his friends that break it up. So we go home and shit. It was crazy. We was like really that's when I found out how motherfucking zip damn fool he was. I mean, zip damn fool. I expect any man to speak up for himself, but I also expect the man, when it comes to having a disagreement with his woman, to be cool, calm, collected, and just let her know it ain't like that. Chill, let's wait till we get home. Uh, you know, or not talk to me like that in the first place. Don't even get drunk like that in the first place. Just act stupid, say any goddamn thing. Not just to me either. He was trying to, he was kind of out of his body with my friend daughter. You know what I'm saying? Getting mad at her because she hit it. She her car kind of rolled back on him a little bit. We was par, but you know how it kind of like she didn't know he was back there. But anyway, so at the end of the day, we get we finally get home, but we ain't 
we ain't cool at all. It was ugly. His friend had to really make sure everything was good. Because, see, I'm not knowing his temperament, and he's not knowing my temperament like that. And I guess he figured, as a man, after all this time, bring me up there. And by me being older, and I guess he felt like, well, she thirsty enough. She going to allow me to treat her any type of way because I'm working and she ain't. And I'm helping her her grandkids, and they all stand here with me. So I got her just where I want her. That's what he thought. But that's not me. I speak up. I say how the fuck I feel about shit. And I ain't going to let nobody bully me or talk to my grandkids on any type of way. That's why I made that other video the other day. Which is yesterday, I think it was. Yesterday or day for yesterday saying, me telling him that you can't do what I do. You can't talk to my grandkids the way I do. You're not their grandfather. They ain't, wasn't raised with you. They just met you a couple of years ago. You know what I'm saying? So you have to build a relationship. You got to build rapport. You got to earn respect. Because I always tell children to respect all adults. I don't give a damn if he mean, if he ain't, you know, being fair. If you're drunk or whatever the case is, you still going to respect adults. You're going to respect people, period, especially if they're older than you. I always teach them that, and that's just the way it is. But what you're not going to do is talk to them, especially in front of me and their mother when she was alive, as if we wasn't there. You know, he was talking to them like they were some niggas in the streets, yelling and shit. No, nah, we don't do that. We, we, we ain't doing that. No, nah, we ain't doing that. Okay, fast forward. That was my birthday. That's September. Now, fast forward Thanksgiving. Now, just keep in mind that we going by our regular routine, you know what I'm saying? We done made up, talked about it, you know, figure out what we shouldn't have did and apologize to each other. That's what grown people do. And that's some shit that don't happen again. Once you go through one thing, you figure the next time you go go through some shit with each other, have a disagreement, it won't be about the same thing. Am I right? So that never happened before. That never happened after again. Because I already knew I wasn't going to many more places with his ass. So that was September. Here it is. Fast forward to Thanksgiving. We had a nice little get together. My cousin came over. My mama came over. We cooking. We stepping. We got music playing. It was nice. Now, we're not even in this house. We're still down the street in the uh, two-bedroom townhouse that he had got for us to move in. So I know that later on that night, he was the type of person that once he go to sleep, he sleep hard. He just drinking. He, you know, like a lot of people. So I'm waking up like hearing his phone. Keep going on. His phone keep going on. I think it was like a vibrating or a little, doo, a little ding or something like that. So I get the phone and it wasn't locked or nothing. It was like, well, you can, because the message was right there. You could see partial message. And that's when I started seeing these messages to this lady named Joy. So I uh, talking to, you know, I woke him up. No, I think, I don't know if I woke him up. Y'all, it was 2016. But either I woke him up or I wait till he woke up and told him and confronted him and had her on the phone or whatever. And he started getting big and bad with you. You you know how we is. We ain't together like that. And you know, you cuss me out, call me out my name. Stop bringing up all kinds of shit that had nothing to do with the conversation. Because before this, after the birthday situation, during that time between now and this Thanksgiving, we just talked about it, living our life. He go to work, come back. Before he go to work, he give me a hug, kiss. When he get in, give me a hug, kiss. I done cooked and clean and did everything. A regular fucking relationship does. We weren't having no problems. We you know what I'm saying? We weren't sitting back mad at each other, not speaking to each other, or saying that I don't want to be with you no more. I'm just going to give you time to leave, whatever. But when he got caught up with this one, right, that's when he want to act like, because she, imagine she on the other line, she can hear. He want to act big and bad like he already told me, well, you know what it is. You know how I men lie to you one thing, portray a whole image, and all the time they at home living their life a whole nother way. That's how some men are. Some women too. I ain't finna go into all that. You know what I'm talking about, men and women. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't fuck with women, so I ain't finna be doing that. So just so y'all know, and that's all across the board in all my content when I talk. So uh, yeah, that's when we was like, okay, this is it. That's when he was like, well, I'm gonna be with her, and I'm gonna give you time to find you a place to move or whatever, blah blah blah. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I started doing my thing, and you know. Wasn't no just talking about move because I already knew I wasn't going to get no job. And my daughter hadn't had one yet. She was looking. So he just had to wait the fuck out. Whether it was six months, six weeks, six years. I wasn't even tripping on that because I know my motherfucking rights. You ain't going to have me down here and think you're just going to put me out because you got somebody that you think you can come in and move in here. Or, you know what I'm saying? Because I had told him, just leave me the place. And you can go move her. He didn't want to do that. He was like, no, nah, she's going to move in here. This is my place, blah, blah, blah. Fuck how you brought me all the way down here. You know what I'm saying? It's just different things he has said and did that made me realize his character was out of order and he's a fucking beast. You know what I'm saying? He's a heartless son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the reasons why I refuse to sleep in the room, why I refuse to 
the hell is that? That's why I refuse to uh, sleep in the room and try to make up and and on and work this marriage out. You know, because after all that, yeah, we end up getting married February the third of twenty seventeen. That's a damn shame. Our anniversary will pop up, and I'll be like, "Oh shit!" He say happy anniversary, even though we ain't like that. But he'll still say it sometime. He didn't say it this the past year, and I didn't say I don't be thinking about that shit. We just happen to be two people living in the same house. We have to be married because we move too fast. And y'all can take a lesson from this, young people, older people. Because, like I said, he was 46, 47, and I was damn near 50. But the delusion of thinking you know somebody from the past, because had that been somebody out the door, out the gate, I never knew before and just met them, and it just felt so right. It never would have happened. I'm not, I'm not that foolish. I could be foolish. I do foolish things, and I have done foolish things. But I would never do nothing that foolish. But even in that, I'm learning and I learned my lesson to know that just because you know somebody you used to date somebody. Now, I got somebody I used to date seven years. Been knowing them. It was way more deeper than this and way more trust and way more understanding and love. And it wasn't perfect. And I wouldn't even think about getting back with them or nobody else from my past. I always want to be friends with them. I always want to make sure they're straight. I always want to check in. And that's it. Do I want to be around them? Do I want to go on dates? No, I don't. I just want to, you know, check in every now and then just to know or look from a distance to know that they okay. I hear from somebody, oh, they good, they good, you know. But I'm not interested in, in having a relationship with nobody at this point, y'all. I've been on here 26 minutes, about to close this out. I'm not interested. For y'all that, that's interested in looking or hoping that this man find y'all, depending on your religious beliefs, when it comes to stuff like that, more power to you. But just know, just because you look at it one way and you are this type of person and you feel this way or that way, that don't mean that you're going to be equally yoked with somebody. You're still the one that's choosing. You could think that person from God. You know what I'm saying? All the time it could be Satan or God can allow that person in your life for another reason. Because I'm going to even tell you this. Even though I know I don't feel like that it was from God for us to be in a happily marriage. I believe God allowed this to happen because he knew that my mom was only going to make it four more years. But I was still down there two and a half hours away or he or not. Because my mom lived in the city and Tony is in the uh, suburbs, which is like a snap away. The suburb in Chicago is like when you cough one time, you you there. It ain't even that far away. So uh, that made me close to us. When I first got it, she would come get on that uh, metro train. She could, she was in much better shape. Then it got to the point where she had to get those rides through the uh, uh, metro or whatever. They give you your special rides for seniors. It got to that point, but she was always actively coming, coming, coming. So uh, that's one thing I look at is that four years to be my mom, to build a better bond, you know what I'm saying? Because we was always cool. Even when I was younger, we had some shit. We ain't had a shit going with their mom. had an argument here and then shit like that. Never was that bad where I ever hated my mom. I know shit like that. Love my mom. So I look at it like that. Like if I hadn't uh, fell for that shit and moved down here quick, it's a bug. I would have missed out on the four years. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I would have known the things I did know, even though I didn't know everything, but I knew way more being close. I was seeing her like almost every weekend. We would go play the penny slots together. Uh, we would play little games online together with people. And uh, then I noticed she started to deteriorate. And then I found out at the last minute, that's a whole nother video. So I won't get into that. I might do a video about that later, especially around her birthday or something like that or just when I be getting in my feelings, like these past few days, I've been in my feelings and I have not been feeling like really talking like that. I just, and I ain't been sad. You know what I'm saying? I had that little melancholy, but I have not been like a depressed state. Like, oh my God, this woman scream and shout and cry. I just had that feeling. But well, like I said before, I just pushed myself. I just make myself get up and do content after so long. I give myself a little grace to sit there and and, and ponder in it and, and uh, marinate in it. I give myself 15 minutes. Oh, there go that storm. I don't know if y'all can hear that. It's storming outside, y'all. But anyway, I hope y'all watch this whole video. It's going on 30 minutes. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoy my content, if you want to work out. 
on Zoom. I'm just asking for a dollar or more donation through Cash App or PayPal. I want to start it next week, not this week, but next Monday. I want to start the Zoom. I'm going to make a community wall video, and I'm going to tag a couple people in it uh, just for y'all to share or let me know if you're interested. I want to see you guys on the Zoom. Uh, even if you just do it one time, let me know. You know, no donation is too small, but at least a dollar. And there it is right on the screen. Malachi the Goat 13. And my PayPal is Foxy Roxy196654. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your day. Bye, y'all.